Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, shit. Buddy! Oh, no! Oh, oh buddy. Bro, I don't think this is going as planned. Our Highland food mission continues in Vietnam's remote northwest. There's a hole on this guy. Last time. Andrew and I discovered one of Asia's most isolated markets. Can I ask you, what time did you wake up this morning? I think so. 3 a.m. Today we're back at it. Hello! Hey! Whoa! Oh my god. Don't kill anybody. Documenting the unusual lives of Vietnam's noom people. Ooh, boom! Oh yes, it's worth. <gasps> no, 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 no. Seeing how they live and how they eat. Man, we've been everywhere and I've never even heard of the Nome. Me either. It's, this is also a first for me. As far as I know, they have their own unique culture, different language, different houses, and different food, including their breakfast. Do they eat insects like the Thai? It's not even an insect. Oh, thank God, man. Think Mr. Ed. A horse? Horse meat. I don't know exactly how it works, but I especially want to know how this tradition came to be and why horse meat is so common here, but not in other areas of Vietnam. Oh yeah. No insects. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, good morning. Ma'am, thank you so much for this incredible breakfast. Before we begin, my first question is, why horse? Miss Yui is one among one million Nung people that live in Vietnam. Most are located in these northwestern highlands. Today, for breakfast, she's making up an ancient traditional recipe. Soup made with horse meat. An unusual choice of protein you won't find in most of this country. For the dish you're making right now, they're gonna use all different types of horse offals, all the different internal organs. Right here, one of the main ingredients, horse heart. Heart's really one of my favorite meats ever. So whether it's chicken heart or beef heart, I really love it. Horse heart, on the other hand, I've never had, but here, it's just another day at the village. The equine organ meats join together in a giant iron pot. According to her, this food has been around for generations. How old were you the first time that you tried horse? I'm still looking at it. She already eat when she was children. So if you ask me, like, how old was I when I first ate chicken, I'd be like, I don't know, oh, yeah, I don't know. pretty young. <laughs> <laughs> like from zero? Or yeah. Right? Next, she adds water and boils it down. Cardamom, star anise, ginger, and cinnamon are added in. To pack an even more powerful pony punch, she dumps in horse blood. Wow! Finally, sliced lemon leaves, lemongrass, and shallots. Do they still use horses here for other tasks, or is it just a food animal now? No, they don't use so much, just for to eat. Mm. Let's try it out. You put a lot of different horse parts in here. I can see there's liver, there's intestine, there's, uh, what's this? Atilak. Is that just meat? Oh, just meat? Just normal oh. meat. Oh. Enjoy. Mmm. Please. Uh -uh. You know, she made this so fast, in a couple hours she broke it all down and stewed it, and it's surprisingly soft. It's really good, actually. So how often does she actually get to eat horse? Because horse are a little bit expensive than other meat. One month they eat two or three times. That's like how often I eat pizza. <laughs> you want to try some heart? I'd love to, man. Huh. That's delicious. That is really good, dude. Wonderful texture. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a crunch, but it's not chewy at all. That is fantastic. Can you tell her this horse heart has my heart? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and you two are not speaking in Num. No, Hmong language or Vietnamese language. So she knows a little bit of all those languages. Yes. Could you count to 10 in the Num language? Yeah, ma. Deo, song, fam, si, ha, sok, set. The Nung people in Vietnam largely emigrated from China a few hundred years ago. Different from Vietnam's Thai people who settled nearby rivers, the Nung people tend to populate the more hilly regions. Carving stepped out paddy fields into the mountainsides so they can still grow rice. In the northwest, most of the houses are made out of wood, but here the houses are made out of clay. They take advantage of their surroundings, using clay and dirt from the field to build their own distinct two-story houses. This thing is powerful. The only issue is that with clay, over time it can deteriorate and break down and cracks start to form. So as soon as cracks form, they fill it in with cement. Eventually, they either need to cement the whole house or build a new one. 
the Noom people are known as hardworking farmers. It's not unusual for them to spend all day in the fields. These days, this routine is starting to change. Every day she go to the farm. In the morning, she go to feed the animal to eat. Wednesday, Friday, she make the fur to sell. Andrew. Yes. I'm very excited about what we're about to see. Me too. Pho is one of these iconic dishes in Vietnam. People around the world have tried this dish, but few people actually see what banh pho even is and how it's made. It just comes in noodle form. They think that's what it is, right? right? They think it just started as noodles. Yeah. But it starts as these big sheets of rice batter, and this is the original way it was made before factories, before mass production. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. They don't see this pop to sauce. A typical Vietnamese pho noodle is usually made out of soaked rice that's left in water overnight before grinding. Here she uses white rice and red rice as a base. How many kilograms of banh pho does she have to make? One day she just sell like 20 kilos. 44 pounds, just the noodles. Yeah, that's a ton of food. Next, a portion of this very same batter is cooked, then mixed back with more uncooked batter. The batter is ready, time to steam it. Essentially what we have here is like a giant wood-fired steamer. You see, we've got a barbecue right between my legs and this giant bowl is just steaming up water through this very finely stretched cheesecloth. And as you can see, the rice batter is gonna be thinly spread across the top here and it's gonna harden up as the steam comes through. <sighs> Whew, so hot as hell. And I don't know why I always get the jobs when I'm standing right next to the barbecue. In under two minutes, the liquefied rice has turned solid again. She rolls it using a giant PVC tube, then lets it cool before the next step. And there you see it, one whole sheet of pho. And this is where pho comes from. It's just a big sheet of noodles. Oh no, my sheet. This big sheet right here is gonna make about two to three bowls of noodles. Please, show us the way. What's really unique, you know, if you go to a pho restaurant in California or Saigon, the pho is gonna be purely white. But here they've mixed together two different types of rice. One of them that gives it this kind of slightly pinkish hue, something you're only gonna really find up here in the mountains of Northern Vietnam. Mm, so carby. It tastes about like what you would think it would taste like. Among 46 nearby Noom families, 10 of them are in the same noodle steaming business as Miss Yui. Where is she selling the banh pho? In the market. And do you make more money selling pho at the market or just doing your farming duties? Sell this, she has more money. The new tiền hơn, gấp đôi. Wow, more. Substantial. Why doesn't she do it every day? The market uh, is not open every day. Oh. Okay. Yeah. When you see pink pho in the Northwest, there's a good chance it was made by a Noom family. Sonny! Hello! Hey! Whoa! Oh my god! Don't kill anybody! I'm trying my best to we're, not! We're in the middle of Can Cow Market. It's just right on the street. Yeah. You could buy a head of cabbage right from your vehicle. This is nuts. Do you think it's drive through Do you think we could order something? We should try it. This is the biggest cattle market in this region. A multitude of ethnic men and women from around this area gather here to trade not just cattle, but also common goods like clothing, plants, and of course, can we get a cabbage, please? Am I? Come on, bap kai. Okay, okay, there's 4,000. That's pretty cheap. Here, you can keep the change. You just bought a cabbage? Yeah. From the car? I like it. So the markets in this area kind of rotate. There's like a Sunday market, a Saturday market. So it's not like this every day. It's about once a week. But some of these vendors are just market hoppers. They'll go from city to city or street to street, hitting up different markets on different days of the week. In order to reserve this dining area year round, Miss Yui pays a yearly sum of $20. While she sets up her restaurant, Andrew and I have something we have to check out. This market is actually famous for its buffalo pit. A buffalo pit? They are the highest ticket farm animal you can buy. Makes sense, big animal. So, we're gonna go to the Buffalo Market as soon as we can find a parking spot. Oh, great. Each Saturday, nearby villagers bring their buffalo here to sell. Depending on its health and age, the acquired buffalo can either be used as food or as a living tractor to help plow the fields. We're in a buffalo mosh pit, and you, ma'am, you're a buffalo seller. <laughs> This lady has sold one buffalo already. Is this hers right here? Wow. Ooh, so this is an albino. Is that still okay to say? But instead of selling her own cattle, she bought it from another farmer and will resell it here using her negotiation skills. Can we do a practice negotiation? <laughs> Hello. I like your buffalo. I would like to buy it. How much are you offering it for? 
is 32 million. Credit cards? No. No. Uh, what about Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Each of these buffalo will be sold for about $1,500. In the village, we have no ATM, so they only have cash. So people are rocking up to the market with thousands of dollars in cash. Yes. In the meantime, I'm told there is sometimes bullfighting even here in the market. Is that true? Well, no. Yes, they have. <gasps> do they bet money? We money. And how do you know which buffalo won? Which buffalo so run away is the losers. Oh, has this buffalo ever fought? No, it's albino. And <laughs> These bulls require no provocation. Fighting is in their DNA, and it's even part of herd life in the wild. But even in the wild... There are two buffalo. There's one up here, there's one down there. One or both animals can wind up badly injured or dead. Oh, sh buddy! Oh, no! Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, buddy! Oh, buddy. Ooh, I don't think this is going as planned. Dude, this is right in someone's yard. Yeah, this isn't where we're supposed to go down. No, I think they were trying to conduct a buffalo fight, but the buffalo just did it on their own. Before any butting of heads, folks place small bets on who they believe the victor will be. It's over here. They're bringing it down right now. This is going down, dude. Oh, no. What? What? Dude, look at the size of these things, man. Oh, man, he's powering it around. They didn't have to do anything. These buffalo wanted to fight. This doesn't seem like a great thing to do with your tractor. Like, you just spent a large amount of money on this giant creature, and now you're gonna let it go at it? There's some blood. Oh, man, it's bleeding, it's true. No, 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 no. What just happened? <laughs> they still need to use these animals. But <laughs> Turns out, this is more like buffalo fighting light. I think that's the case. I mean, they just had to pull them apart. Damage may be inevitable, but as soon as these beastly bovines start actually hurting each other, the owners call the fight. One drew a little bit of blood on the other one, so they're saying this one's a winner. After all, a buffalo that can't work isn't of much value. Although, they seem pretty fine. <laughs> well, considering, but I mean, that one's got a hole punched in the side of it. Oh, come on. It's definitely a guy sport. I don't see any women who yeah, 100%. Ah, uh, guys around the world never disappoint. We're kind of morons, right? We're all morons. Yeah. All this unnecessary violence has gotten me famished. Time to see what Miss Yui is up to. Good morning. Oh, it's almost, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, first for me, this is a dry fog. My first question, I mean, off the bat, why pig face? Typically, Vietnamese pho is proteined up with beef or chicken. But here, she's combining her pink mountain noodles with pig face. This is like a special dish that people like to eat this part. Early this morning, she purchased pork at the market and prepared it in her hillside diner kitchen. What is her favorite part of the pig face? The part of the chick. Oh. Mm -hmm. Really tender. I'm surprised. Pig is like the perfect food. You don't really have to add a lot to it. Yeah. That's tasty. When it's ready, she combines the noodles with peanuts, mint, basil, MSG, and some seasoning powder. Finally, top that with a combination of unusual meat cuts from an unusual meat part. I know that the color comes from the mixing types of rice, but why do they make it the pink color? Smell mm. and the little bit of the taste, you can tell the white noodle are taste a little bit different. I think it does taste different. It has more of like a wholemeal type flavor as opposed to like, you know, white bread versus full grain bread. Mm. I can see that. It picks up some flavor from the peanuts, yeah. from the herbs, and you're supposed to be mixing a little bit of the meat in there too. Put that all together. You've got a little bit of fat, a little bit of carb, a little bit of protein, and that's all your macros. I mean. <laughs> I'm fascinated by this because mm. it's kind of this whole region is eating this type of food or this type of noodle. That's cool. So that's like their twist, their innovation. Is it their innovation or did people here invent pho? Oh, wow. Vietnamese people make pho first. Are you sure? If you want to, you just publish a video and you can say that you guys invented it. <laughs> no one to try the eye. Oh, oh that's the crazy. Eye. I thought that was a black olive eyeball. Do you have any eyeball in yours? She okay, already eat. eat. She ate it already. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let's go. Let's go. Huh. A little bit of cornea in there. I like it a lot. Mm. Generic porky flavor, just a different texture. Mm. It's all about the texture. Yeah. When she was young, her parents tell her that this business is good. They go on the farm, don't earn so much money, so she likes to sell her. You went from farming to running this far selling business. What would be the next level after that? 
She don't think she gonna go any farther. She know how to cook, so she said this is the best for her. Are you happy with the work that you do now? Vui lắm. Dạ, là gặp nhiều người lắm chú ạ. Is it satisfying when you see someone try your food for the first time and they're smiling and they really love it? Does that give you some satisfaction? Vui lắm ạ. She's very happy when other people are like. That's awesome. People from my country might look at Miss Yui's life and feel bad for her, but she might feel the same when she looks at you. Life here isn't perfect, but Miss Yui lives among nature. She eats healthy food, she has a family, she has a community, and she has an occupation that gives her purpose. In a land where 401ks and vacation homes don't exist, Miss Yui is more rich and more happy than most. We've seen a day in the life of a market vendor, but next time, it's up to Andrew and I to take the skills we've learned on this trip and do a little country cooking for ourselves. I've never seen a pig this tiny. You could microwave this pig, it's so small. <laughs> Being an influencer doesn't require millions of fans. All you need is this t-shirt. Entertain and inspire at your own pace. Don't be an influencer, be a micro-influencer. Get your shirt now. Ah. So here she has a two-handled knife and she just makes tiny, tiny little cuts. You know, repeat that a thousand times and you've got 44 pounds of noodles to bring to the market. Boom! Another video done. I hope you guys are enjoying. We've got one episode remaining. Just one? Just one. Wow. The fun is almost over. You can subscribe to Andrew's YouTube channel right here. Check out his videos and see what he's up to. Please do. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. You gotta, you gotta say it. You want me to say it? Yeah. A piece. Oh, Andrew, you nailed that one. Yeah, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. Yeah, that, you had a lot of heart. I felt it. Okay.